You got problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Do you uh, run carbon or anything like that? Not in planet tanks. No? If you run carbon in planet tanks, it takes everything out of the water that the plants eat. This is so sweet, man. I mean, I, I'm totally f salt water, but this, this is pretty cool stuff. This, this is an all in one? Yeah, it's an all in one. With the Kessel? CO2 dripping down to the bottom. Oh, is that what that is? Because mm -hmm. I don't know. Jack. You go down to CO2. Uh huh. Oh, even below this? No, no, no. You were just right there. There's nothing really below it. <laughs> that looks cool, though. There's another one. Those are, um, those are all South American cichlids. Those are all um, fish from Brazil and the uh, and the Amazon, except for that that um, that beta fish that's in there. It looks freaking happy in here. Yeah, he was in a little jar, a little cup, bottom. right? Yeah, I had to free him. Can you uh, stick two of them together? Or no, they kill each other, man. So that is that's true. That'd be like putting two two yellow tangs in a tank uh, after one's been in there. Uh, established dominance on steroids. Wow. It'd be a fight to the death and guaranteed they're gonna kill each other. This is sweet, man. So, what is this right here called on the top? This is just a, go a pothos plant, like a house plant. Uh -huh. And what you do is, it's just like putting a mangrove in a salt water tank. It, it sucks the, ni uh, the nitrates out of the water. <laughs> That's so cool, man. It's just, um, you know, Mangroves, you gotta put them in, in, in brackish or, or salt. So this is an innovative marine. Mm hmm. That's very cool, man. What kind of sand? Is this regular sand? Or? Check out the crawfish right there. There's a little drawer of crawfish. Oh, okay. So cool. I'm glad he came out. It's pretty cool. He never comes out. Got three of them in there. That's, this is a nice, really, really cool. Yeah, one of the nicest freshwater I've seen. Very cool. Yeah, I started off with these little neons a long time ago, just like 10 gallons. But uh, they sell my paintball canisters, 24 ounces. It lasts about a month, but it's $4 to refill it. Uh, but when you do planted tanks uh, with stem plants, uh, plants need CO2. Um, it, this is only a month old. And with a, I've already trimmed it six times. I trimmed it before you came over. And how much uh, water changes do you have to do? I do 50% once a week on this one. And this is regular regular water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to... Um, I have to soften the water and, and uh, drop the pH in it a little bit. This dude looks cool. Oh yeah, that's Captain America. He looks great. Oh no way, we would be able to take care of him up there. Uh, so, yep, I'm gonna get out the way of it. Watch out, Abraham. So, are you gonna like? Can you frag these plants or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can frag them faster than you can uh, than you can corals. You can frag this tank once a week. And what kind of lights are these? Are they just? Uh... Um, these are Par 38s. Uh, they on Amazon. There's a guy that sells these fixtures, and these can be used for salt water. Oh. And they sell Par 38 bulbs that have the the same as a 26 or, or a radion. They have the blue, yellow, red, and whites in them. But they're only thirty dollars for the bowl. And then this little this little thing right here will do a, a 24 by 24 tank, and it's fifty bucks. So I I knew having to do 12 feet of tank was going to be expensive. You know, 12 feet of tank is going to run you uh, every bit of at least a thousand dollars if you went with quality lighting so t5s you know or t8 so i said uh how can i get this job done and get this whole project completed under 
you know, twelve hundred dollars. I did this whole build under under twelve hundred. And you made the the stands yourself. I, I remember. The, I remember you were knocking them out. <laughs> and I built the stands and um, and then uh, I ordered the I did the lighting. I did the stands for a hundred. The stand cost me a hundred and thirty dollars for both. And then the uh, the lighting uh, was three hundred, and the tanks were six. And um, this, is, this is pretty cool. I mean, I didn't. I was like, eh, fresh water, but it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it's very, so. very cool. I think all the, because I know there's a lot of freshwater um, videos out there, but you know, very cool. I I, I like every part and of the hobby. So it's what's pretty crazy is that there's not like a whole lot of movement so i would think that you would have to have your uh you know water turned over a lot or else you would get all kinds of crazy nuisance al algae but well that's still the case i have to do 50 percent water changes right now to, do, to keep that from happening until this these plants grow in these plants are new you see how they're spreading those runners <laughs> that's pretty so deep. those little runners they're going to cover every part that you see that's black it's gonna be all green. It's gonna look like grass. It's yeah, too cool, man. Um, the yellow part was the the uh, those all the plants and 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 you know that you purchase from stores. They're grow they're grown immersed, which means they're grown uh, in a in a damp aquarium above water, and the, the roots are submerged. And then they put them in light, so they grow faster. That way, they don't have to put CO two into the into the water. And you put CO two in the water to make them grow, but there's no CO two on this tank. This tank is a low tech tank. I wanted to do um, pretty pretty high tech to me. Well, the, the, this t uh, what the, what's, what what separates a a high tech tank from a, a low tech tank is the 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 addition of that that CO two. If you have uh, CO two, you can you can do a Dutch tank like that back over there. You see all those yellows and reds when you go around. You see all those yellows and reds on those plants. Let me go to the other side. Yeah. They're um, they won't grow in a tank like this. They have to have CO two. Oh, on this side. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. You'll see the difference in the in the type of plants. You see the colors on, over there, the orange and and yellow, and and the, just the different kinds. The, those uh, carpeting plants, they're going to cover the the whole thing as well. This tank is only like eleven days old. So, since you're from Florida, did you get started with freshwater first, or did you? Yeah, when I was um, I started doing freshwater when I was. About 14 years old, I got an acrylic 10 gallon tank and I uh, went and got a whole bunch of sand and a bunch of rocks and plants and threw a whole bunch of fish in it and three weeks later they all died and um, my, my, um, my stepmom and my dad were like, no, you, uh, you can't keep any more fish, you kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I ended up moving back uh, with my mom uh, and um, I guess after I got married and uh, you know I had a job, I did a 55 freshwater, and then um, I killed some German rams, and that made me, uh, you know, want to be like, why can't I keep these? Why are the fish stores able to do it? I need to figure this out. So I really started to learn about water chemistry, and then um, after that, uh, we I dove headfirst into salt water. I went and bought 120 tall, and. Um, I ordered all the live rock uh, from Bulk Resupply, all the dry rock from Bulk Resupply, and I set up a, a 120, and that was uh, what? That was probably about seven years ago, so I've been doing aquarium for about 10 years now. About 10 years. That's crazy. And are you enjoying all the new, is there, is it like the technology the same as with salt water always? You know changing and stuff or is it pretty much the same with well yeah, it's just like with anything you know you have paradigms and and uh you know everybody wants things faster and results immediately so there's always going to be new stuff i love the technology i love the lighting and, and the stuff that comes out but at the same time i also admire like simplicity i look at things that that, that okay i can take this tank and if you look on the shimmer on that that looks you know kind of like a kessel Mm -hmm. I was able to replicate that for fifty dollars. So I like to 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 sell things that are beautiful, but find a way to do it that's cost effective. Yes, I, I I can afford to buy the new the the nicest stuff, but not everybody can do that. And right. I like to see if I can make things work. 
and show other people that don't have a whole lot of money. Like I joined this uh, this club on the plants, and I'm because there is shimmer, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm going to I'm going to take the uh, the clippings and, and grow them out. I'm going to create a new uh, rack right here and oh, grow sweet. them out. Yeah. And then I'm going to give them away to uh, less fortunate members that don't have a lot of money. Oh, that's sweet. And so it's going to go all right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set up a, 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 a five foot uh, stand right here. But that that'll be next year. Uh, I, I'm I'm done. Right You're now. grounded. <laughs> well, I'm not grounded. My wife tell me I can do anything I want in this room. And she and you know she she's very she's very cool. Yeah, I see. <laughs> it's pretty neat. My wife's you know real understanding. I mean I don't do anything. I, I play video games at work to come home and I do fish tanks and video games so it's not like I'm out in bars and exactly spending all the money. That's know. what I that's what I tell my wife. This is basically Calerpa right here. If you want to know what what this is you know, this is Calerpa for freshwater. It's crazy. Um, when you don't have CO2, see the CO2 over there, the CO2 drives the growth of the plants. That's why those plants are always all the way near the top of the tank. Um, so that CO2 in there is, they're, they're, those plants are sucking everything out of that water. But these plants, all of these are low light, no CO2, slow growing plants. That means I won't be trimming these once a week over here. I won't be in here doing a bunch of stuff to this and um, I won't be having to trim them. Is that why there's kind of like bubbles on the top of here? Is, is this CO2 coming out? Yeah, that's from the CO2 and uh, also if you if you look long enough and look at the plants you're gonna see you see all the oxygen coming up off the plants? Yeah. Those plants are, are uh, if you get it in the water column. Yeah. You see all the bubbles? Those, those That's oxygen coming from the plants. That's crazy. Yeah, they're they're um, they're creating oxygen. And what what is this thing right here? That's called a drop checker. That lets you know if there's CO2 in your tank. If it's blue, then there's no CO2. If it's green, that means it's it's optimal CO2. And if it's brown, then that means it's toxic for fish. Oh crap! It's mainly for fish because there are fish going in this tank, but this tank is different from this tank. This tank, the plants have to get rooted. Uh, there will be no cycle in this tank. In a tank like this, there's no cycle. All right, you, you hear you got to cycle the tank, you got to cycle the tank. There isn't a cycle in here. So you can just throw fish in there? Not right now. You got to let the plants establish themselves. And once they do, when you throw the, you, when you throw the fish in there, when they pee, the, 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 the plants eat it. They suck it up. They immediately suck it up. So there's never any ammonia. Wow. There's no ammonia. There's no nitrite. There's no nitrate. Uh, there's no nitrate. Uh, you really, the only reason why you have to do water changes is uh, to replenish the KH. Uh, you gotta put the cage back in the Does, water. Uh, do, do plants uh, consume elk as much as like a they, they they do? They need it to build their uh, to build their you know the, they need a little bit. They just need a little bit to build their uh, you know to, to build their structure. They need that in carbon, carbon and and, and some calcium. Uh, but that's about it. They don't they don't you know you don't have to dose calcium in here. Actually, that would probably kill um, a lot of the plants <laughs> in here. Yeah, this crazy. water is acidic. This water is alkaline uh, for these plants. These plants are from Africa. And then these plants all here are from the Amazon. Did you have to get a lot of this stuff online? or? I bought it all from one website. I did it all in one order. I planned the whole tanks out before ahead. Uh, I mapped everything out where I was going to plant it. I mapped out the aquascape before I did it and uh, you just like with a reef tank you, you start planning it in your head and get a plan down on what you want to do and then you get a checklist going and that's all I did and I was like uh, you know what would it be cool to have you know it's, it's kind of like if you can relate this to uh, salt water in salt water you, you have a reef a mixed reef and then you have a predator tank uh -huh. so if I could take that and relate that to, to a planet tank you have a high tech planet tank and then you have yeah, a high tech and then you have the low tech. So there's different kinds of plants, different kinds of things that can live in a low tech plant tank and there's um, some of these plants won't be able to thrive in a, in a high tech tank. So it, it's the same as, you know, choosing fish or, or anything like that. You just gotta, you know. So like on the freshwater side, what would be the hardest plant, like a kind of, I guess like an SPS? Oh, the, um, 
I wouldn't necessarily say that, they're, that, that you can compare them to SPS. It's SPS, that you're, you're, that's the hardest uh, thing to do. I mean, really all you have to do is just make sure that your parameters are correct. Uh, but I would say the hardest one is that one that's dying right over in the corner. It's, a, it's, the, it's the one that should be purple right now. Oh, it's wow. sticking up to the top, but I'm, I'm not able to keep it. But everything else is doing great. That's the only play I lost. I lost two of those little purple ones. I wanted to have some purple in here, but I guess it's not going to work. Yeah, because this actually looks harder than a saltwater tank to me. But. No, this is easier. Um, oh, for an SPS, I mean, all tanks are easy, really, if you do your water changes. Do your research and all that? Yeah, this is easy. Like, I, I can teach you right now how to do a planted tank. It's, it's so easy. 6,500K lighting. That's all you need. Substrate. You have to have good quality substrate. Over here is Eco Complete. Over here is going to be your top of the line uh, Amazonia uh, and uh, Mr. Aqua. And then I got some Fluval. Okay. And I, and I got some red uh, clay substrate. They're all made by Fluval and, um, and Seachem. Same okay. people make all okay. stuff. Yeah. This in the middle is just pool filter sand. There's no plants going in here. They can't grow in that. So that's that's all that is. It's lava rock in the middle, but back to I'm getting off track. But um, yeah, for to, for a successful planted tank, you need three things: good lighting, good substrate, and CO2. CO2. Those three things. If you do those, and, and the CO2, all you have to remember is if, you, if if you're gonna keep plants, have your CO2 come set on a timer to come on one hour before the lights come on, and have it go off one hour before the lights go off. Okay. Because if you don't, then at night, plants suck in CO2 during the day, and at nighttime they expel CO2. And if you have too much CO2 in the tank, it kills the oxygen, which suffocates your fish. So, Sweet. one hour before the lights, one hour, you know, before so they go off. So, could you uh, do like a song, do a reverse cycle on a planet tank? Or is that a... Yeah, that? yeah, um, there's a video on it, um, on a discus tank, there's a... Uh, there's freshwater miracle mud you can buy. Um, they have a freshwater version of it, and uh, it's. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, you know the American Reef Channel. Yeah, they I do watch Mike, it. Mike Paletta. Uh huh. Well, they have um, they have this uh, this fish store. This guy he raises discus fish, and that's what I want to put in that in that tank right there. I want to put discus fish. In. Oh, Those okay. are the, the the prettiest fish. You'll ever see in your life they're they're amazing for freshwater they're amazing and, and i want to do them and, and angels in there and with that uh with those the water has to be pristine pristine it's just like keeping sps they if they got any nitrate any any any, any fo high phosphate or anything like that you're gonna you're gonna you can kill them i mean as long as you do good water changes and keep up your habits you, you won't kill them it's not like you know they're impossible to keep lots of people keep them but um, so they, he's running a sump and he has freshwater miracle mud and uh, he does that to, to keep the, you know, to ensure that the, that the tank stays in, in good parameters. And, and in the video he says he, he didn't do a water change for like nine months and he has over like 15 discus in that tank. Um, and check that, check that video out, it's pretty cool, it's about 40 minutes long. Yeah, most of their videos, I, I watch them. Um, this driftwood 